We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Yes, so I see you are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in, in the room. We are a couple more online. And I think uh, people still uh, are struggling to, to join uh, remote uh, people. Maria. Um, hello, Maria. Uh, your, Maria is my colleague. Yeah. Hi, you? everyone. Hi, Antoine. Hi, everyone. Good to see you here. Yeah, apparently there are some, a lot of people still struggling to get onto the platform. So I don't know if we should wait or not, but Antoine, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can uh, we can start. Um, and I wanted to to welcome you and thank you. And um, and first of all, maybe saying that um, it's uh, quite a pity. I, I would have loved to be in, in Poland um, this week, uh, but it uh, didn't work. Um, so um, I'm, I'm sad. And at the same time, I'm happy that we can uh, have that moment uh, together. Um, what we are going to do, we have uh, 45 or 40 minutes now. Um, the idea for us is to um, present you um, a short reminder of what is with the internet, where we do it, and then um, start a discussion um, in bridging uh, the results of the citizens' dialogue with uh, the discussion at IGF 21. Um, and this is our key idea um, by what we are doing. Our idea is how do we create a bridge between ordinary citizens, citizens that are um, no st non stakeholder, that are non active stakeholder of internet governance, but that have um, that knowledge, that have the wishes, that um, think about something. How do we make that connection? How do we bridge the stakeholder discussion with citizens of the world? Um, I will sh now share my screen to give you a short presentation of what we have been doing and um, some results that we think are connected to this year uh, IGFs. So with the internet, um, as I said, is um, what is our vision with uh, the project, the process to test, improve, and institutionalize internet governance with and for the citizens? Um, that's our uh, goal. Uh, the journey started in 2017, um, and we started to build a coalition of uh, key partners coming from all stakeholder groups. So you see uh, the main supporters at the bottom of the presentation, uh, but we had a much larger coalition of partners all over the world. In 2020, we um, were ready to run and to implement a global citizens dialogue. Um, what is a global citizens dialogue? Uh, a citizens dialogue is um, a way to engage ordinary citizens into governance. Uh, we um, select um, randomly or through, um, we select groups of citizens to represent the diversity of their country. We give them a moment, we give them a day a full day of discussion with information input on key topics of governance, and in that case, internet governance. So the idea is not to have an opinion poll, but to have a process uh, through which citizens are able to discuss, uh, confront their opinion with people they have never seen, people that are very different from themselves, but on the basis of information and different opinion and expertise. And what we get out of this is what we call the enlightened opinion of citizens, the informed opinion of citizens. And this opinion, we feed it back into the uh, governance process. So in 2020, we had um, the dialogue in 80 countries um, of the world. Um, we had more than uh, 5,000 participants in all those countries. And um, also due to the pandemic last year, we had uh, half of those dialogues being online dialogues and half of them uh, being physical face-to-face -face meetings, some of them being hybrid meetings. Um, so who are the participants? Um, we had participants in terms of gender, which were very um, diverse, uh, with uh, 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 over-representation of youth, because if you take the global level, uh, youth is, uh, over, uh, is the biggest group uh, of population. Um, and in terms of um, occupation, it's the same. So you have a 
a big group of students and pupils due to the uh, demographics of uh, the participants. But you see that you had also um, many different um, professions and people engaged in that process. So as we um, prepared the, the session this morning, we're thinking, OK, uh, what are uh, the results of the dialogue that are of interest for this year's IGF? And we um, looked at the high level tracks and we picked the three of them. And uh, what I would like to do now in a, shortly before we uh, have a discussion is try to understand, OK, what is being discussed at IGF this year that, is, uh, that can be fed and be um, inspired by the results of uh, with internet um so the the first uh, track we have picked is uh, the question of the sustainable value and inclusive society and the second one um, is the question of inclusive and diverse innovation um, and um, the corporate social responsibility in digital technologies and to illustrate um, those high, high level tracks we have connected that to the results around one of the, the topic of the dialogue of last year, which was my data, your data, our data. So the question of data society and how do we make it an inclusive uh, process uh, for um, all citizens. Um, so if we look at some results and we can then discuss them and have a, an exchange on that, um, a huge majority of the, the participants had a view that a data-based economy is equally an opportunity and a threat. So no, not uh, only an opportunity, not only a threat, but something that we need to work on and to govern, uh, to be inclusive. Um, then what they said, um, and participants had a very strong view um, on their responsibility and their agency on the data they produce. Um, and as you see it, um, majority of them wanted to make all the decisions by themselves when it came to data also that of selling the data. Um, and if you look at um, after the discussion, so this is one of the key um, elements of such a deliberative process, um, is that we, um, we have citizens that enter a process, uh, gain knowledge, uh, and build their opinion. So we ask them at the end of the day if they have uh, um, changed their opinion, if something has changed in their mind. What we see here, is that for uh, the participants, a huge majority of participants, they have a better understanding of data. And this means for us um, that it is the results are then strong in the way that people have taken the time to think about it. And also, if we uh, ask them at the end of the session if they will share layer, uh, more or less data, or if they will um, go on doing the same, we see that a huge majority of participants say that they would share less data. So there is a, a kind of um, um, process that goes in the, the head of the people. Um, we had a, another um, part of the process, which, which is related to the question of inclusion and uh, data economy and uh, inclusive business models. It's the question of disinformation. We, add citizen, we ask citizens to uh, consider the three main actors in internet governance, so public bodies, private sector, and civil society, and um, the kind of tools that are being put in place in order to fight disinformation. And we asked them to rate those different tools, those different um, um, solutions. So what came out of that um, is that citizens um, ranked the highest um, tool or the tool with being the most impactful and the most urgent as being education. So that's an interesting um, view and thing that it's the most urgent for participants is not a technical solution, is education. So to, to tackle the problem, um, by education, but they also say this is what will have the highest impact. And this is for them, we ask them, um, who is it for public bodies? Is it for public bodies a, um, a priority um, or, uh, or not a priority to tackle this information through education? And will that have an impact? And as you see, a majority, a clear majority of the participants um, were saying, okay, for public bodies, it's very important uh, and very impactful to work on education to fight disinformation. And this is the results of a work group. So it's not individual results, it's the results of a table of six to eight people discussing and coming to an agreement together, saying, okay, for us as a group, this is uh, the solution. So what you have is a percentage of groups, not the percentage of participants. 
And this is very important because it's a collective uh, view. It's not an individual view on the question. So for public bodies, very urgent, very uh, impactful. What is interesting is that for civil society, participants consider that it's the same. So it's education is urgent and will have impact if civil society works on disinformation, tackling disinformation through education. And the same for the private sector. And that's interesting too, because for the private sector, we would have expected more that maybe people um, choose a tool around uh, technology, around uh, algorithm, around uh, content moderation through um, people. And no, citizens picked as a priority and an impactful uh, way of tackling disinformation for the private sector, education. So that's a clear appeal for all stakeholders to uh, work around education and digital literacy um, in order to have those uh, inclusive um, and um, society and the sustainable value that uh, is the high track. Um, and the role of digital platform is then very important. And then um, when we ask them to rate um, who should take the lead um, in that work of um, tackling this information. So for the people, the, the, the less good solution is no one. So um, uh, wild uh, or uh, laissez-faire is not a solution for citizens. They want uh, action. And they see the, the main responsibility uh, on the side of the technical community. So it's the, the most uh, blue one uh, on the below and the civil society, the United Nations and regional organization. National governments are a bit less and then citizens themselves, they don't see uh, themselves as being the one main actor to do that. Uh, but they see that the lead um, should um, be taken um, by technical committee and civil society. Um, now, if we, um, I won't be too long, we have a lot uh, of results, but we have not uh, so much time and I would like to have more time for the discussion. And um, we will pick another uh, high level track, which is the one on um, the governance models. Um, so governance models, uh, we ask the citizens um, at the end of the process, uh, and that's um, one of uh, the questions we always ask if um, citizens dialogues should be a, a way of making decisions on the future of the internet and citizens were strongly of course um, supporting the, the view that um, it would be a good thing to do so of course you can say there is a bias because they were through the process but um, at the same time it's a very clear message uh, that citizens want to be engaged in the governance uh, of the internet um, and if we ask them um, now to put that into perspective, uh, who should be uh, included in the decision-making process, um, they have a strong um, view that um, almost everyone should be. So there is no one um, that is below 50%, um, and all actors should be engaged into that. But you see that there is a, a, a bit of a stronger view for um, research community uh, and the technical community um, and um, other actors to be engaged in that. So a multi-stakeholder model is very um, supported by citizens. Um, then we asked also them uh, to rate um, as, a, as, as groups, um, which is the best level to take decision. Um, and they clearly see that um, there is a, a priority for the global level. So IGF and global IGF is a very relevant place for them uh, to take decisions but they have a slight different uh, views on the different kinds of uh, decision-making. And if we look at that, um, the question of, uh, for example, on disinformation on data, they sit more at the local level. Um, and this is due to the fact that, of course, they said the content is in local languages. So uh, disinformation is also a more local uh, question. But if we look at uh, topics like environment or internet governance uh, itself, they see it more global thing. Artificial intelligence were, was ranked the highest as um, a governance um, uh, topic for the global level. Um, so, and this is what we, we asked um, when we asked, we had the uh, session on artificial intelligence and we um, asked them is um, if it would be important um, to uh, hire an IE ethicist. And it, and it felt to us that it's uh, relevant and interesting when we discuss the governance model to promote inclusive uh, and diverse business models uh, that many, many business models now are going to be based on artificial intelligence um, and that for citizens, one of the key uh, 
while developing business models based on artificial intelligence is that um, there should be uh, an ethic point of view uh, on um, that topic within the organizations that are developing such models. Um, so the um, I say a word on the next steps, um, what we are preparing at the moment, and then we can open the floor and have a, a discussion. And we have uh, two, three um, guests today that I would like to leave the floor to before we open the discussion. But we are working on a plan towards 2025. Our idea is to understand how we connect the process to the global uh, internet governance uh, process while thinking about 2025 and the next uh, cycle of internet governance. Uh, we are coordinating global activities, we are supporting national activities, and we are engaging internet governance uh, to understand how we can um, push for that idea that citizens have a view, have a say on the internet governance if we have the good tools uh, to do that. Um, so I will stop now the presentation. Um, and I'd like um, to um, give the word um, to um, Louis um, Pouzin, who is with us today. Um, and Louis, um, I know that you have uh, read the report, that you uh, have um, thought about the results. And I'd like to have your, your feedback, your feeling about uh, that process and its results. Uh, Louis, do you mind putting on your unmuting yourself? We can't hear you. <laughs> Unmute on the on the Zoom on the Zoom tool. Sorry, voilà, it's okay. Brilliant. What is okay? Bah, le son. Tu n'avais pas le son. Ah bon? Okay. So now apparently I have the sound, but you have the sound too. Hello, you're Maria Tazi. Yes. Hi. Hello, Louis. We have the sound and we hear you loud and clear. All right. <laughs> so I, I had the, the intention to talk about the, what we are doing now, uh, not, not to go back to the things we've done several years ago. But at the moment, you know, we're involved in RENA. Have you heard of RENA? Not at all. Okay. RENA means recursive internetwork, <clears throat> recursive internetwork architecture. If you can see it, I'm not sure the, the, the leaflet is uh, the opposite. It's called RINA. This is a totally new architecture, which had been created actually 10 years ago by a, one of our colleagues, an American colleague called John Day. John Day has done a remarkable work of redefining a new architecture for internet. You know, at the moment, <clears throat> when you work with uh, TCP, for example, well, you have you have the ability to dispatch what you're doing around the world, that's fine. But on the other hand, what you are dispatching is only a one, la one language, or at least one, one, one text or one uh, document that can be received by everyone, but it's the only one they can receive at the same time. In other words, it's, uh, it's a system which provides for a sort of a, Unique, unique capacity for, the, for dispatching many things, but not at the same time. So what we have done, what uh, Jean De has done is to create something which looks similar to TCP, but completely different. The sense that we have in, this, in the arena, the ability to to have a multiplicity of channels so that you can send information which can be received by a, a large population and everyone can select or choose the particular, the particular uh, channel they want. 
It's a little bit like uh, like the, the radio. Louis, the radio. Thank, yeah. Hello. Thank you for the for the Rina. I suppose you you will be presenting that um, also at the booth uh, you have at, at IGF. But I wanted more to to ask you about your your feeling and and your um, um, feedback on the, the the process of with the internet. We you have talked with uh, Maria um, and and discussed the the with the internet process and the um, way of engaging citizens. Uh, and I wanted to have your feedback on that. What you what was striking for you in the results of with the internet? I say I'm not sure I understood uh, your various uh, aspects, your, your various points. <clears throat> First, you would you want me to repeat a number of things or to go be more precise for Rina or what? No, I wanted to to see if you want to react on with the internet and uh, the process of the citizens' dialogue. I'm sorry. If I, I make it a bit louder for you. Right. Process of citizen dialogue. That means that the process of citizen dialogue, I think it's a, it's a mixture of having first a, an architecture which allows a multiplicity of, uh, of groups or of, in, of, uh, in, of individuals to communicate with other groups or other individuals. That's not exactly what we have at, at the moment on, on TCP. And the next thing is the ability to uh, create new groups, which can be, which can be first independent from ICANN, independent from the the ones that are uh, delegated by uh, by ICANN, and they can they can have exactly the same services they have on the on the internet, but they can be in different languages and they can also be in different in different code if you want to make to make it uh, either uh, either uh, cryptid or not you know okay so thank you thank you louis for your your feedback um maria um do we have um other from our um partners that wanted to maybe yeah give the floor on the list um Maybe uh, maybe Stephen is here, and Stephen is actually Stephen McCarthy is actually one of our partners in Ireland, and he was able to uh, implement a citizens dialogue in Dublin, if I recall. Maybe Stephen, in very in in very quickly, you could tell us how that went, and maybe uh, remind us what were the key findings that came out from that dialogue. Yes, Maria, yeah, thanks so far. Um, yeah, I, I think um, the event we had was, was fantastic. Um, providing that space for, <coughs> excuse me, for citizens to speak and, and have their say on, on a very important topic. Um, I think the key finding was citizens need more of these kind of opportunities, um, particularly um, to have their voice heard further and um, I, th I think the, the across the board, I think we heard a lot of different types of citizen speak. Um, and yeah, I'd be very glad to organize another one. I think the appetite is there. So thank you, Stefan. And um, I'd like to see now if um, from from the room in Katowice uh, or in the room online, uh, you have some questions, feedback, uh, things you that stroke you or where we are wonder, where you are wondering okay what's what's about that and if we can uh, have that uh, discussion so um the floor is uh, to the room and i'd be happy to uh, maria and i would be happy to uh, answer if we can stephen is also here was one of our partner uh, and see what we can do yes liberty Sarah, we can hear you. Yeah, no. Hi, my name is Sarah. I am based in Sydney, Australia. It's great to be joining you. So I am the, the founder and the CEO of an online human rights NGO uh, here in Australia. We recently did some research in Australia to understand what do 
Australians know about their online human rights, which is our area of specialty. And we conducted a poll of Australians and we had a simple yes, no answer. And we asked people, do you know what your online human rights are? And a very large proportion of people don't know what their rights are. And it highlights to us the importance of what you talk, what's been touched on is education and reaching people to really engage with them so that they do understand what their rights are online, which are no different to their offline rights. Um, I'm really curious to know what you think would be the best kind of strategic ways of reaching a broad population because uh, we do a lot of media uh, communication work, public affairs, um, but it seems like this is a really big area where people want to be educated, they want to know, um, and we're a civil society organisation and we want to do this work, but we also recognise that it's everyone's, we think it's everyone's responsibility. So I guess that's kind of my question and my observation. Yes, thank you very much. I think it's um, it's exactly aligns with with the results of the, the dialogues because what we saw are that citizens enter the process. Uh, for many of them, we, we asked at the beginning their knowledge on different uh, topics um, and their usage of internet. So we had many people using internet on a day to day basis uh, of the participants. Uh, but then we and some of the topics were quite familiar to them. So when we ask about uh, do you know about, uh, yes, disinformation was something that they knew about. Uh, but then we, we asked something um, like internet governance and they had no idea of that, of course. Uh, and some of, of a couple of other topics, we, we saw that the people were not knowledgeable. And then they entered that discussion, uh, got that information, and we can share uh, also, of course, the, the materials. We had produced uh, short videos, uh, each of them in the local language of the, the country, to explain the, the, the stakes of uh, those topics and also the concepts uh, in a very easy way. So it's in itself an education process so that people mm. could go through it and understand better. And during the process, we saw that, um, and that's the results we presented, that um, people see uh, that everyone is responsible for education on uh, the rights and on, on, the, on the responsibility. At the same time, they, they see that themselves as citizens need to be reached out by other actors. Uh, so this is a kind of uh, a tension uh, because as you said, we, we see they want. Uh, it's, it's a clear message they give is we want to be educated uh, and we, we need to be educated. Uh, but at the same time, they, they don't see the, the responsibility by themselves alone and they see others to do that. So when you say as a civil society organization, um, we, it's, uh, should it be part or we think it's part of our responsibility here, would have a very strong support from citizens saying, okay, that's, that's indeed. Now, your, your one million question, oh, um, that's, that's a good one. Because uh, here, um, I can only tell what we have as results that citizens said, uh, we need um, more um, literacy and internet uh, literacy. And um, then what we could do uh, is look into the qualitative results to see the, the path they wanted to, because we asked them what kind of tools, and here, that data we have, uh, but we could look, we could share with you the, the, that kind of data, and we could, you could have a look at, okay, this is maybe some of the paths that they see, but the overarching, um, it should be a, a collaborative effort uh, with uh, part responsibility from the citizens and part from the stakeholders. Um, and I don't know, Stefan, if you want to, to add on that, on, uh, on, on the, uh, yeah, on your... Yes, thanks, Antoine. Yeah, I think one other thing that came up during the Irish results, and um, it's a great question, I think also maybe embedding these kind of topics into the curriculum of both primary schools, secondary schools, and also university level. So um, yeah. at a university level, I know I'm in, so I'm a lecturer in University College Cork, and um, when you talk about these topics, but it seems quite late in, in the person's um, education to start learning about these topics. So I think Betty from an early age, um, that was definitely something that came out quite strongly. I think there's a lot to be said for it. It's a very good question. Thank you. Great answers. Thank you. And um, so other questions from, from the group around um, the results, around the process?
I, I, in the room, I don't see if you you have your hands up because it's. Uh... I don't see no one in the room. Okay. So then, um, I, I would say, Maria. Yeah, maybe maybe someone that's in the virtual booth with us. So, Hi. of course, there are a lot of people who actually were supposed to come to the virtual online booth, but there was a technical issue. So um, we're still actually waiting for a few people, but maybe someone else in the online session wants to actually ask a question or have a comment on the results. We can see Sonia, Tome, Aru, Tuwan, Abdullah. Just go ahead and take the floor. Go for it if you have any comments. Uh, there is someone in the room. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Raul Plummer. Uh, I'm with uh, Electronic Frontier Finland. Uh, and I was wondering, uh, do you have these um, educational videos on your website uh, so that we could disseminate them to in, in Finland? Yes, so we uh, indeed we have all materials are published as um, copy left, so it's a Creative Commons license. Uh, also, the the design um, of the the dialogue and um, they are normally in the local languages. I don't remember right now uh, our group in Finland, Maria, if they were able to to do it or if they had to cancel in last minute. I know that in um, in one of the Nordic countries we had a partner that had to cancel in last minute. But I don't remember it was Finnish. So it may even be the case that um, all materials are in, uh, in Finnish, uh, but you, you find everything on the, on the website and also the method itself. So the idea is, of course, for us um, that it's not something we, we keep, but something that can be um, reused, um, re redone. And um, we also are very happy to take a, an hour uh, with you to go through the materials, uh, explain you, and if you want to use it, uh, we are really happy because it's the way we think. Uh, it should be done that uh, we have produced that uh, uh, material and it's still valid. That's the, um, one of the interesting uh, maybe um, aspects of deliberative processes that they can be, they are not uh, short, very short time, but they can be used a couple of uh, years. Uh, so we are really happy to share it uh, with you. And if you uh, want to take, uh, to uh, get in touch with us, uh, we can do that. Okay, um, just an idea. Uh, I saw UNESCO as one of the partners uh, and I was wondering I know that uh, there are UNESCO schools around the world so maybe that would be a point to start where you could start disseminating this information to like primary schoolers yeah very very good point we we tried to to stand with uh, the field offices of UNESCO we had a we had started that cooperation uh, and it um, but then the of course the schools are a very good point so thank you for for that point we also had um, the idea but this year it's um it's less uh, on the top priority to work with the uh, Goethe Center uh, all over the world. Uh, they have a very good coverage, um, but that's something we, we want to explore. Of course, those, those networks uh, of also the network of libraries are very important uh, partners, but thank you for, for the advice. We, we, can, we can do this. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you for, thank you for the presentation. I just want to ask whether you, at the regional level, do you, whether you do collaborate with, um, say, the regional IGFs or the local uh, national IGFs to present this uh, or gather, gather information as well. And uh, if you just run your, your program um, independently, independent of the, of the NRIs. I'm, I'm referring to the national regional initiatives, whether you collaborate with them. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you very much for the question. So indeed, uh, many of our partners uh, who run the dialogue in their country are active in the national uh, or regional IGF. Uh, so it's a very, uh, very good link that we were able to, to build uh, with the national IGFs. Um, in some countries, for example, we also had a very strong connection between the national IGF and the citizens' dialogue. I'll take the example of Rwanda. In uh, Rwanda, the citizens' dialogue was um, connected, was part of the uh, Rwandan IGF. Uh, so, and that's also part of our idea, is how do you um, connect 
also that discussion uh, between citizens and stakeholders at national level uh, and not only at the global level and then you can build uh, on that so um it's for example also in in bolivia there was a so it's a roberto zambrano uh, who did the, the the process in um, in the country and it was a uh, connected to the local IGF, to the national IGF. Uh, we also had a strong link with uh, in Germany, for example. So we, we are trying uh, to see and understand how we can connect um, the, those, those local discussions with uh, the local initiatives. And we are uh, in many discussions with the IGF Secretariat and then uh, NRI's group. Uh, so it's for us, of course, one very important um, path because it's um, I mean, it's the, the logic also of the internet governance to have that local level and, and uh, global level. So yes, but if you if you're active in one of the countries uh, at a national level, we're okay. so happy to connect and see if we can uh, do some things together. Okay, I, I, I would like, I would be happy to connect because um, uh, we are shortly going to run uh, Africa Internet Governance Forum. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can connect and do some presentation, then that would be excellent for us. Thank yeah. you. Very good. No problem. And Maria, maybe you can give us um, news from, from one of our partners in, in West Africa. Yes, actually, we've, we've received very good news lately. <clears throat> that one of our partners in Bina, in Benin, has actually wanted to uh, relaunch a citizens' dialogue um, now in December. So it's going to be held in a few weeks' time, I think, on the 17th of December, so in practically 10 days, um, around data protection and, um, and Beninese data protection. So we're very much looking forward to their findings and their results. And, um, and this dialogue in Bena has actually also led to another dialogue that's going to be held the day after in Burkina Faso. So uh, we're very happy that partners are actually getting involved um, independently from us and uh, relaunching citizens' dialogues all around the world uh, in the We the Internet format, of course, so that we can all together bridge this, uh, make bridges between ordinary citizens, everyday people and stakeholders at national, regional and global level. So, of course, if, if any of you are interested in implementing such a citizens dialogue in your country, in your region, we have everything um, necessary for you to do so. We have all the materials, um, videos, infographics, all the detailed outline of the format um, in a specific toolkit that is accessible and open to everyone on our internet site. Thank you, Maria. Uh, we have four minutes left, so maybe one last uh, comment question, and then we can close uh, the round uh, for today. And uh, so uh, is there a last um, wish to comment or ask something? I see not in the room and not online. So I would say um, thank you very much for those uh, 45 minutes together. Um, I hope that we can uh, build relations and, and go on working with that. On our side, um, 2021 was a, a year to uh, re-state um, forces, or you, how you say, to uh, uh, rebuild forces uh, on the process. We have uh, plans for 22 to 25, and we have uh, that uh, ambition that we want to keep that line of understanding how can we um, make it a, a normal way to do, to have ordinary citizens into uh, internet governance, for the many advantages it can have for everyone. Um, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Um, I wish all the people uh, in Katowice a, a great day uh, on place. Um, and maybe we see each other in another room uh, during the week. Um, and um, I hope it was interesting for you. Don't hesitate to reach, us, uh, reach out to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the very last thing, if you want to follow us on, on social media, you can follow us at hashtag we the internet. Um, and you can also go on to our internet site and just read through, uh, look at videos, watch photos of our international dialogues and have a kind of a view of, of what we're doing here visually. 
Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, everyone. Bye.